<laughs> what is up, y'all? This is Two Jersey Kids episode 36 and a half. I am one of your hosts, Adam Buckingham. I am the director of this car crash this evening alongside me. Well, not really alongside me. You know, he's through the internet thing that is. We're on the line. On Skype, the best on the can- line. Exactly. You sound like a you sound like a seventy year old. <laughs> the best stick handler in the video game business, Gary Seisel. How are you doing today, Gary? Excellent. I'm actually excited to be here to do this episode again. I feel like it's been a while since we've done a topic oriented episode. Yeah, so I'm happy to be been, here. It's been interviews lately that are based around the topic, which you're here or you're not here, depending on when you're available. Uh, but yeah, if you guys didn't know, this is Two Jersey Kids. We are a video game podcast. We release every Tuesday and Friday. This episode on Tuesday, I normally say how we're going to break down the games that are coming this week. I'm not sure people care too much about that because it seems like they care more about the topics that we talk about. So we're going to skip that. But if you are upset or butthurt that we did not put the games releasing this week in this episode please tweet us at two jersey kids on twitter and let us know you want it back because it upset you and we'll bring it back and we'll do it at the end or the beginning depending on which way uh makes more sense um but yeah we're a video game podcast our friday episodes we talk about the games that have been releasing this week if you're interested if you're a new listener go check out our previous episode episode 36 Uh, a lot of good stuff in that uh episode a lot of things talk talked about you know mario kart 8 reducing porn sales or whatever it was a good time good time yeah, it was a great time great. That was, that, that's a sad thing is that the first that's the first thing that popped in my head about that episode i don't know why <laughs> it was our favorite topic yeah. <laughs> let's be real oh and the eve stories eve stories always uh great but before we get into the topic that is this week which gary will explain in a little bit uh but i just want to know gary you're my best friend what have you been up to i'm just curious how you've been doing well it's kind of in a week from hell from oh, work damn. um <laughs> i mean so we started out, we, we've been doing this international tournament, like I explained last episode, uh, you know, with a lot of teams from all over the planet. And, you know, it's been a cool time. It was fun, you know, to meet different people from other countries and everything. But uh, eventually, you know, I worked uh, Tuesday and then I worked Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then today, Sunday. Um, and it was, you know, it gets kind of exhausting after a while trying to deal with, all, you know, the language barriers and everything. And not to mention <laughs> the fact that it's really crowded all the time and we only have two people working at, at any given moment so uh you know it's Just been two a little people like they didn't ramp up operations for this tournament no no we well smooth it is weird i mean it, it is strange actually we didn't have three <laughs> people on it it does kind of blow my mind a little bit but you know you do what you have to do uh, so it wasn't um you know it was a learning experience but also kind of stressful as well so anyway um in terms of video games and stuff like that i've been playing uh when I well, when I've been able to play, I've been playing Destiny. Uh, back to my back to my old tricks again, playing Trials of Osiris with my friends, and it's been a great time. It's kind of fun to get back into it again, and uh, you know, just sit back and, and have a good time again. So. It seems like this is just like a bad relationship that you have, Gary. You always yeah. you always leave well, it, and then you're like, oh, I could go back for it, and you come back, and then you get upset well, by things that are going on that piss you off while playing was, it, and you're like, shit, why'd I come back? Oh, don't get me wrong. The meta or meta in the game blows. So <laughs> that um, that's really annoying. Like a lot of people just to – I mean not that I expect anyone to really know what I'm talking about if they aren't Destiny fans. But sticky grenades right now, I'm sure everybody's familiar with that, like Halo plasma grenades. They're like the meta right now. People just spam them constantly. And uh, it's really impossible to counteract because they are basically – they just magnetize you. You'll be standing like five feet to the right. They'll throw it five feet to the left. It just curves like a 12-6 curveball <laughs> and it hits you, and it's really infuriating. So that's what you're dealing with in Destiny right now. But Does it is it does it does actually move like when it gets somewhat close? Oh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's magnetic? I, you'll watch, oh, yeah, this thing will stick to you no matter how terrible the person is that's throwing that. Like I, I've had times where you watch the grenade fly past your head. You hear the sound that it stuck you and it kills you. It's unbelievably frustrating. Oh, that sounds ridiculous. I remember plasma gra- grenades in Halo 3. You had to actually just yeah. stick it on them. Uh, exactly. Yeah, it requires some sort of skill. This one is totally trash, and it's for trash players. I said it. You heard it here first. <laughs> actually, probably not, though. But That's, anyway. The plasma grenades, when killing somebody, sticking them with the plasma grenades were the, were the most, uh, the best feeling it was great. ever. It was. It yeah. felt so satisfying to hit them, have it the glowing things stuck to them. Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, you can always say something witty when you do it too, like kind of <laughs> curse them out while they're before they're dead. It's very enjoyable. <laughs> uh, you just have been stuck. 
I know. But I'm anyway. so clever. That's why everyone's here. <laughs> oh, man. But anyway, Adam, uh, what have you been up to? I, I know I've, I've rambled on long enough about my own boring life. Oh, let me get through a yawn. Man, these past two episodes, for some reason I've been tired while recording them, even though I'm hyped to record. Uh, I just, uh, recording this on Sunday, uh, what have I been up to? Really, just not too much gaming-wise, because over the weekend I like to chill, hang out with my girlfriend, you know, do some fun things. We went to, uh, today I tweeted out, we went to the Air and Space Museum in Chantilly, uh, Virginia. Pretty awesome. I've been to the one in, uh, D.C., uh, obviously because it's all, it's a smaller area because it's D.C., so there's not... Nearly as much, well, there is a lot of stuff, but it's all, like, in a condensed area. This one is, like, a hangar bay right by Dulles Airport, so you have planes flying past the road that you're driving into. Gigantic hangar, so it's pretty straightforward. It's just one little hangar area and then a back area that shows you, like, the space shuttle Discovery, which is awesome. Um, And it just, I don't know, it just showed all, like, the progress that had been made. Like, it's insane to see how... Going from 1908 with the Wright brothers and their discovery all the way up to now, like 100 years later, and now we have like uh, international flights taking place, like jet engines on Boeing uh, 777s uh, or 7, 787s, I think, are around now, the ones that are exploding or whatever uh, with the oh. stupid lithium <laughs> ion batteries that have been going on. Uh, encouraging. Yeah. But, I mean, that was a news cycle a while ago. I think they probably fixed it by now because, I mean, <laughs> it would make most sense to finally fix it. Uh, but it just goes to show you, like, the innovation that I'll – it's just it's just crazy to see how much we've come along in innovation yeah. technology-wise in, in that realm, which I'm fascinated by. Uh, I mean, that's what I studied in college, air, aeronautical – well, no, it's aerospace engineering because you can go – air or space which are in space but still shows you in both facets how crazy uh, of a jump we went in and it also makes me angry when i went to like the space area to see like how far we sort of came for going from like the 60s the 70s and then like once the apollo program basically shut down they less and less funding came to nasa and it just really makes me angry yeah it kind of pisses me off too actually like, how, I, I, how much farther we could have gotten if they had nearly the amount of money uh that we could have that nasa could have received uh that they received at the apollo program i think apollo program was like at the height of nasa's uh funding based on inflation and everything uh and it just goes to show you nowadays nasa is working on a tight budget but they still do innovative things and it just makes it like crazy to think about the amount of money that they spend unnecessarily on things if they brought it to nasa and nasa and a lot of other science departments do uh provide a lot of innovations um it's just unfortunate because, I mean, you go on a NASA website, it, like, runs down things that NASA – you don't think about NASA has innovated on due to, like, space travel and the wonder of trying to figure out how to live in space and just trying to solve answers that uh, – or solve questions that we don't even know are out there. Uh, and it's just – it's sad, but, I mean, it's still – NASA's still chugging along. You have the privatized industry, which, uh, I mean, I was talking to my girlfriend about that, which is good, but the main – problem with privatization of the space industry is that there's going to you know they're only doing it for profit they're trying to make things cheaper and cheaper which is great but they're not really just going out there uh trying to find answers to certain questions which is what nasa is supposed to be doing i mean it's it's kind of a it's exciting that there's a privatized uh, spacex doing great things reusable um rockets but i mean it's just sad that <laughs> uh, we're not it just frustrates me as a nasa boy <laughs> okay. i can uh, tell and i, I actually not to get off on the whole space podcast thing, but uh, <laughs> I desperately want to see a moon or Mars landing in my lifetime. I hope I see both. I'm I sure I see you both. will. I, I, uh, I really do think you will. I think it's just – it's just getting – it's getting the, I guess it's getting the public more into space travel, which they were back in the Apollo days. Uh, but I mean, after you land enough people on the moon, people just get tired of it unnecessarily, and they don't realize the benefits that they 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 receive from answering these questions, all these engineering feats that go into it. I mean, like random things off the top of my head that were created because of NASA innovation. Uh, uh, baby, oh, for, uh, what did you say? Velcro. Velcro, sure. one. Baby formula. The padding for – just random things. The padding for uh, football helmets, NASA because they're astronautic suits. Uh, I think peanut butter was a, oh, another thing, like the way they created peanut butter. I don't know. That's what I remember. Uh, and there was a, another one. Uh, I know they say that the Defense Department like created G- the GPS system, which is true. Yeah. They had the satellites up there, but NASA is the one that innovated and created the software that that GPS system uh, used. So NASA's behind that. Um 
It's just it, it goes to show you that NASA does with a little amount of money you get you put in it actually produces a lot more uh, value economic wise and uh, it just it just frustrates me because I think that uh, society nowadays needs innovation in what they're gonna do next <laughs> or what we need to do next to you know next job uh, creating uh, avenue which we haven't yet and innovation on any science department any any science based company I think is important. That's just me. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you're passionate about. That. Yeah, I'm really <laughs> passionate. It frustrates me to no end. It really does yeah. that we don't that NASA or any science department that are so, doing good things don't get the funding just because of you know politics. Yeah, all the shit that this country spends money on, and yeah. that's not one of them. It is pretty stupid. The fact that the military budget is ginormous is yeah. ginormous. Well, yeah. It's unnecessarily ginormous, in my opinion, because <laughs> uh, I don't think you need. Uh, we're not getting into politics. I'm not getting. I'm not going down that road. I'm not going down that road because it would just be another twenty minutes of me getting angry. Uh, Gary, where, where? What's the topic for this week? <laughs> okay, so back to gaming. Uh, our topic for this week is going to be our favorite final missions and final bosses. So it's. Um, it took a little bit of time, I think, for us to actually compile at least a a short list of our favorite stuff so um i guess i'll go first i the first game i had i think that i'll surprise adam in some ways is uh modern warfare 2 i had shepherd shepherd the villain from that game Uh, i don't know it was kind of like a i kind of just picked this off the top of my head it just kind of occurred to me i was thinking about all the games i played in the past especially on playstation 3 and this guy i don't know i um I know that like Call of Duty and Modern Warfare isn't really known for the stories or maybe the villains. I mean, they've had some memorable characters and everything, but uh, I don't know. I just I, I think the reason why I picked this guy uh, is because of the whole betrayal that happens during the story where he kills uh, Ghost and Roach. He basically turns like just kills his own men, and then he wants to basically become like a national hero, like save all the glory for himself. You know, kind of a stereotype or a uh, what's Asshole? the word before cliche story. But yeah, an asshole move for sure. <laughs> um, but I, I, I kind of picked this because I remember the, the final mission. I don't really remember too much about it uh, in terms of what I had to do. I just remember I had to kill this guy. And I remember uh, the final kill you land on this guy is with a throwing knife. You throw oh, it in yeah. his eye. Yeah. And that's actually – that's why I picked this. I was like, you know, that's – he was a, like a good character I felt. But at the same time, I just love that, that last <laughs> – that last sequence where you just throw a knife in the guy's eye. It's so – memorable but i mean um, do you consider that really a boss battle though is that is it not just because really. like, the quick time events that happen that sort of indicated a boss battle is kind of yeah it, i mean i don't know if it's necessarily he's the guy you're trying to kill he's the boss i guess you could say he's the bad guy um you gotta get that but, bad guy yeah but actually on a side note um i also included uh cod four kind of the it's kind of like oh, the same that, thing the slow down sequence with you had like the deagle or whatever and you just yep poof, poof. Yeah, and price I that. price is sitting next to you slides the pistol to you oh, and everything. Yeah. yeah i like that yeah. i like that one a lot more because i felt like a more action movie um, yeah it was I, know, sick. I know it was badass you pulling out the knife and throwing it into the person's eye but still the it was badass the sliding of the gun slow motion it now felt like you were in the action movie itself <laughs> crazy question do you remember who the villain was in cod 4 can you remember the name probably not though. no not at all. because <laughs> i because i didn't either but i looked him up and his name was imran zakayev of course so, yeah yeah because you know bad guys are always russian apparently yeah <laughs> But yeah, so that's uh, that's actually my first selection that I had. Well, not really my first, but we're uh, we're keeping the best for last. I, could, I guess you could say, yeah, because we both uh, we both picked the same thing at least in that. So, uh, Adam, what is your one of your picks at least? Well, for, well, uh, I'm going to start it off on one that uh, for some reason this when Gary suggested this topic, I don't know why, but I had. I don't know if it's just the long day that I had today or whatever, but for some reason I struggled with th- thinking of things. So I had to go through and sort of look at past games that I played. Um, and then one sort of popped in my head saying that that is kind of memorable. Um, and it was, uh, I don't know how to exactly pronounce it, it's J-Ram, <laughs> J-Ram uh, in Bloodborne, which is the final, quote unquote, the final boss, even though you can, f- I think there's three typical endings depending on what you get. Uh, and he's like this old, um, basically hunter in Bloodborne. So he's basically kind of like you. 
he but you're kind of take, trying to take his place, I guess you could say. Um, and it's just fascinating when you trying to fight him um, because he has he's basically the same type of fighting style that you are. Um, so I mean, it just seems like he was trying to mimic your moves, and he had like uh, he was obviously crazier. So it just it, it just felt more memorable memorable because it felt like you know the classic final boss samurai showdown type deal where you're like the upcoming person and you're you traveled and defeated all these things all these crazy nightmares all these crazy bosses and then now it's just you one-on-one with basically a mirror of yourself and you're trying to see who who's the best mind you i lost multiple times trying to fight this motherfucker <laughs> but i did finally end up uh winning uh, i don't think i did and i don't think I got anybody's help on this one, which I'm proud of. I, I defeated him myself, um, which some bosses in that game I, I needed some help. Uh, not all of them, but some definitely. I was like, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> Thank God for the internet, man. I'm telling yeah. you, save my ass more than once. Yeah, cause I'm, do you know, Gary, that like in Dark Souls and Bloodborne, a lot of times you can call in like characters that want to help you, like actual human characters and they'll come to your really? world and yeah fight the boss area for you or just fight with you until the boss is com- defeated oh they, they don't they don't die like can they die they can die yeah if they die then they're out of your world but you can still go on but if you die personally then they die yeah. they they're yeah. left that's cool yeah it's a really cool mechanic they have in just in case if you're really struggling with certain bosses um but yeah i mean that that mean that it just the setting and everything. You're fighting in like a basically a bunch of like uh, I think like flowers on the ground, some trees in the area. It's very beautiful, like the blood, red blood moons in the background, uh, and it just feels very climatic. And that's why it's sort of when I saw Bloodborne, it was like the final boss that the final boss that I got to. I didn't really put in the extra gameplay, new game plus to get uh, the to the other ending, which is another fucking thing in itself, which I looked. Oh, uh, looked up. <laughs> so, yeah, it just, this sticks in my br- ma- brain because of that reason. Uh, but, yeah, Gary, what's your next uh, boss or level or whatever you're going to l- throw out there, which I feel like I know? All right, so uh, I'm, I'm sure that anybody that's familiar with this podcast already knows it's coming, so I'm sorry, but uh, you got to deal <laughs> with it. Um, so I had kind of like a mixture of final boss and final mission, and that is the Star Forge slash Darth Malak from Star Wars Nice Little Republic. Mm. I feel like it's only necessary. I mean, you know, made a fourth all just these topics, after all. All these topics have to have KOTOR in them. I think we, it's we a gotta, rule by Gary. We got to make that meme with me. <laughs> I, you have to Photoshop my face on that guy's hair, that crazy <laughs> fucking hair, and just have KOTOR. Okay, <laughs> that's a good idea. I, I didn't think of that. I'll do that next sometime in the future. Somebody, if well, instead of me, because it may take me a while to do it. If somebody's listening out there, Cat maybe, because you're good with design. I don't know. Allison, I don't know. Nikita, I don't know. I don't know. Go do it. It'd be great. It'd be hilarious. I might make it my profile picture. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so I chose this uh, this final mission, I guess because of the fact that anyone that's played the game, they know that it's really not a hard game. Even on the hardest difficulty, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, but this final mission, honestly, for me, upon the first time I played it, it was like an absolute heart attack. I know, Adam, you've played it as well. Yeah. Uh, the amount of enemies you face in this final mission, it's just overwhelming. It's just an endless wave of people, and you have to really know your shit and know what you're doing in order to actually survive because I feel like if you don't plan ahead and you don't have like the right amount of supplies and everything, and then you go to face Darth Malik without supplies, without med packs and stuff like that, you're basically screwed. Um, but uh, yeah, I picked this because it's just it was just a very, very memorable mission. I, obviously, it was my favorite game I've ever played, and that's definitely part of the reason why I included it on here. But um I just remember, you know, obviously Darth Malak, like the final fight. And once again, Adam, I know you know exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. And basically, that you spend was a pain your, in the ass <laughs> when you, you first when your... you first find out what he what he does, and then you're like, Shh, motherfucker. Oh yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's the final mission for people that aren't familiar. Um, you basically you have to storm in, you have to go to the Star Forge. You have to infiltrate the. It's basically a space station. It's kind of like the Death Star, except it doesn't destroy planets. It's just like a weapons factory uh, or a ship factory. Well, you have to go in there, you have to kill a bunch of enemies, get to Darth Malak, and obviously defeat him. So the final stage against Darth Malak, you have to fight him, but at the same time, he's able to... It's really kind of crazy. He has, like, these culto tanks, or, like, uh, they're like, kind of, like, I guess, prison cells. I don't know how you would describe it to someone who isn't, really isn't familiar with Star Wars, but... Like, basically, 
you see it in movies all the time, like the health pods where they're chilling yeah. in like floating liquid and they're just chilling with like breathing masks and such. Yeah, exactly. And basically, Darth Malak has imprisoned Jedi, or several Jedi, in this little this little area, and basically he'll draw upon them, like basically heal himself after you do a certain amount of damage to him. So you have basically have to run around, and destroy all these things, and then destroy him and. It's a real pain in the ass, but it's just such an awesome boss fight. It's just so epic with the music and the way everything plays out. So I'm shocked you didn't pick. I, I'm shocked. Well, I guess it was a culmination of the level Star Forge and fighting Darth Malak. I'm I'm sh- shocked you didn't choose like you know Kotor two, which is your favorite one. Uh, uh, with fighting Kreia, Kreia, Kreia. Her boss. I don't know. I mean, yeah, Kreia. That's correct. That that last level, honestly. I like that entire game, but like that last uh, Malcor Five is the last mission or planet yeah. in that game, and I don't know. I, I sometimes find myself forcing myself through that last planet because it's kind of really there's like a lot of cut content there, um, a lot of stuff that wasn't finished, in, at least on the console version. Now, luckily, I played on the PC version. I've played that full that full uh, you know game, mm-hmm. and it's much it's much better there. But yeah, I, it was okay. Kraya, the Kraya fight's all right. <laughs> and um, you fight Darth Sion, that's okay as well. But there's just so much stuff missing that I couldn't really include it on here. So that's fair. That, that's my uh, that's my second pick, Adam. What's your next one? My next one. All right, this is this is in regards to the first Gears of War and the Gears of War series. Um, and I know a lot of people probably think I'm going with the generic here or generic villain that pops up, which is General Ram, in the game, which makes a crazy appearance. All of a sudden, like in the first level where he kills like your Lieutenant Kim, just out of nowhere, he's just like a big hulking figure, very intimidating, very scary. Um, but I didn't choose it because the last level when fighting him, it felt like a generic boss fight. Didn't really feel very Gears of War-y, um, I guess you could say. It didn't have a lot of suspense. It just felt like you were just peppering him with bullets, hoping that he would drop down. Um, but the the one that was memorable for me in Gears of War, and I still remember because I... I played the remastered version on Xbox One and it still gave me the same, like, nervousness and chills. It was the Berserker in, like, one of the first few levels. Uh, it was terrifying. It was this thing that, uh, basically just, it, it was blind, but it went off of sound, I guess you could say. Um, and it was just, you're in this small little, I guess, house, kind of. It's like this building, and all of a sudden you just hear, um, the Berserker, uh, sound. I think it, like, breaks away from, like, somebody that's uh, holding it, and you're just in the this house with the Berserker, and you don't have much room, and it just charges at you. It just has a very creepy vibe to it, which is what I love from the Gears of War franchise. I love, um, them providing that scare and suspense, which they did so well in the first, uh, first one, uh, which I adore, and, that's why I thought the General Ram fight was a little, a little something, something to be desired. I guess you could say they're missing some things out there uh, left to be desired. Uh, but the Berserker level, I think, or Berserker fight brought a lot of that suspense. Um, you had to draw it out to the opening opening area so you can use like this uh, hulking weapon, the Hammer of Dawn, to finally take it down, which shows you that. You have to use the satellite from space channeling the sun's energy to just to take out this massive beast and obviously hit it three times because that's the generic boss trope that you have to do. Um, but, I mean, that I just like that it's kind of goes in with what you were saying with the level design and the fight and everything calming me to this. This, I felt like, had set the scene for what Gears of War was. Uh, this was like one of the first bosses, I guess, you would face in that video game, in that game itself. And it set the tone that these are scary, gigantic beasts that you have to sort of basically run away and hopefully uh, last-ditch effort take it down. Uh, so it, it, it provided the tone for the game, which uh, makes it really memorable, uh, especially the fact that it, even now in my tw- uh, 20 years of age, 23 years of age, uh, I go play the remastered version and I play that level. It still provides a lot of suspense for me. I'm like, shit, 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 get out of the way! <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's why uh, that one, I, I chose that one. I, I feel like that... that sort of yeah resonates with me i guess you could say uh but yeah that's enough for that gary uh do you have any more before we go into the one the joint one that we have uh i don't really have any honorable mentions i I mean i guess if i if i had to pick one right now off the top of my head um damn i I, well well it's not really off the top of the head if you can't name it (laughs) no i was i was gonna say maybe bioshock the original bioshock with andrew ryan but Um. It isn't really much of a final boss fight. I, I, I mean, you I, ended up. 
I saw a lot of people said uh, on like some when they were saying the most memorable boss fights, they were saying the Big Daddies in Bioshock themselves. Like they were yeah, kind, okay. of, kind of like bosses. They were pretty memorable trying to take those motherfuckers down. They, I mean, that was always intense, but yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was going to say, I was thinking about Bioshock earlier with Andrew Ryan, but unfortunately, I mean, the, the way when you eventually kill him, it's all cutscene. It's not actually, you're not doing anything. So, I mean, it's a badass moment. You, a lot of things, a lot of stuff is revealed to you in that moment, but uh, it's not really a, a real mission or anything. So, I do not really have anything to you. I mean, I nah, nothing off the top of my head. No honorable mentions. This is why, like, I. He, <laughs> The way my brain works, I remember games and, like, enjoying them. For some reason, I can never quite remember the story all too much. Unless it completely, like, sticks in my brain. Like, and, I don't know, it just it's just not as often where I remember specific characters. Uh, I just remember the gameplay and, like, the scenery of the game. And I always forget, like, the characters, except for, like, the main ones that are involved. Uh, I think that's just the way my brain works. Like, when I read books, can't really remember the characters. I remember the basically the through line but i can't remember intricate details about it uh even though i do like i know i like the book itself um but it it requires a lot of reading (laughs) read overs (laughs) for me to remember itty bitty details that like somebody like one of my friends can just recall off the top of their heads just like that like through the first reading so this is how i how i am sorry i just hit my mic uh gary should we get into the final one because it's sort of a joint one yeah let's do it all right, I'll read it off. Uh, so our final choice, our joint choice for, our, I guess, our favorite final mission slash final boss is the Maw mission from the original Halo. Of course. Um, of course. This one is just, you know, and the funny thing is I don't really, uh, I'm not, I don't consider myself a hardcore Halo fan. I don't yeah. know about you, Adam, but this mission, I just remember it so well. I mean, for, for, you know, being so young, we, I think we were only like, uh, I don't know, I, I guess in 01 it was, what, I was eight years old, but I didn't play Halo that much until I was a little bit older, maybe yeah. 10, 11. I um, think I was around that age too. I think it was like, I may be like 10 or 11 or 12 when I finally got this on the Xbox. Yeah, so it's, I um, I just remember this so well because we were so young and yeah, when you're younger, obviously everything is just so much more impression impre- yeah. impressionable on you. Um, and I just remember this final mission. Uh, I know Adam and I uh-huh. have had an experience in the past playing this on Legendary, which yep. is uh, very, very scary. Because yeah, <laughs> you're facing... Especially because you have... The thing that's memorable about this is that it just ends off kind of like an action flick. You just hop in Warthogs and you're trying to beat the time. And uh, and the thing that made this this ending mission great is that I know a lot of people said that they liked the Halo 3 ending more. Uh, because it was more open and it felt uh, that it was a better, I guess, sequence, I guess you could say. But I like the fact that Halo 1, it felt like it was enclosed. It felt like you were ex- escaping a ship or escaping something. Yeah. Like you it weren't, was... it wasn't just like an open area where you could drive willy nilly and didn't have too much suspense. This was, there's thing, there's, mu- there's, freaking pillars and shit in the way. And you have to drive around it and you have to make sure you make it to the end. Uh, well, th- I think for me too. Like I think that the the mission itself, like you start off, you're basically going full circle in the game. You know, you're going back to where it all began, yeah. which is the Pillar of Autumn, Autumn ship, which is now crashed on Halo. Um, so basically, you have to go in and you have to self destruct the ship to destroy Halo, and then escape before that happens. So uh-huh. I, the fact that I think you really made a good point in the fact that it's you almost feel like when you're when you're driving out of there and trying to get away, you almost feel like you're enclosed, like you're. Yeah. You're, it's like claustrophobic. You're, you're driving down these narrow corridors. You have to avoid obstacles, try not to hit them. You're also getting shot at by just about everything in the yeah. area. Especially in legendary um, difficulty when you can get – if you yeah. fuck up and you get shot, start getting shot, you're done. You're done. Yeah, you're it's done. over. <laughs> but I, I – um, the thing about – like another thing too is like if you remember – I think your your timer is is set at something in the beginning, and then you get to like a certain point where like a little cutscene happens where uh, you're, what the hell is it? The um, Some, uh, somebody's supposed to pick you up. Uh, yeah, what's that ship? What are the ships called in that game? I can't Pelicans? remember now. All this Pelicans. There we go. Um, remember, she's she's kind of like a I guess like a sort of a main character in that game. Like you hear her voice a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember she gets shot down, and then it's kind of like a, your heart kind of sinks because then you realize you got to drive more to get to your actual <laughs> ship yeah so. oh yeah i but. forgot about that that is true that adds another extra bit of suspense that's why when you know it's gonna happen <laughs> once you're on legendary difficulty and you know it's gonna happen that's when you just fucking you know what screw it book it and yeah. i just skip that cutscene when they're going that's down true and everything uh, that's true because for people that haven't played it's it's 
at that point. So you you basically drive, and it's like a you drive up this ramp, and then there's like a drop off. So if you you know you have to keep going basically to get over it. But if you stop there, the cutscene rolls, and then the time keeps counting down. So you just lose time. So I guess yeah, yeah when, when you know what's coming, you just keep going. You're like fuck it, I already know what's happening. And one so, one yeah. of the the crazy things that I remember. Do you remember in that driving sequence? There's this really long, just all of a sudden gigantic jump. Yes. That you have yes. to make. It's so like climactic. You just like yes. just fucking go, and then you're just falling, falling, and trying to hit the tunnel. And sometimes you miss it. And. I have. I'm not sure you remember this. I'm sure you do, though. Um, so Adam and I were playing one time. I think it was we were just trying to get. We were probably bored one day and decided to play this mission. And I, I remember we got to the very now. end. We should. We should stream it sometime. If <laughs> I guess with a camera because we can't stream on Xbox. But anyway, I remember um, the very end. You're driving and then you eventually have to get out of your warthog and then run the length. I guess the last like yeah. so many feet or whatever to your ship. I remember we flipped over. Yeah. And I remember I died, and Adam was the only person alive. <laughs> he was just running for his fucking life. I think you got on this ship with like less than a second left. That it was so close. <laughs> we were like screaming at the top of our lungs downstairs. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure this away. is probably like one of the first times we beat Legendary. Uh, that it also reminds me of the time I I did like the same same run because you and everyone in, uh, everyone I was friends with loved playing that last mission and like and the flood mission. It was that and the flood that everyone wanted to play because it was suspenseful. I remember I played it with uh, J- your good old friend John, Gary. John uh, Basili. Yeah, man. Um, and I think I've said it on the show before. I think it was like one of the first episodes where I remember this and I make mention of this. I specifically remember because we got to that part where we had to stop and we both hop out. And we're it's like 15 seconds left maybe or something like that. And we're both running. And all of a sudden I see or John on his screen all of a sudden – it brings us back to the what you were talking about with destiny and the sticky grenades all of a sudden <laughs> a blue light hits his screen and he just like <laughs> dies and i'm just i just keep trucking it and you know it's just like super intense and like we make it with like basically like a second left uh i guess you could say yeah that's another thing too i don't think it was like i mean i'm sure it was possible i'm sure some people did it but it sure seemed like every time you you would do that mission you almost always landed within like five seconds of, yeah. of dying. Like it was always last second you got on the ship and survived. And that last, so. the last part of it, you getting out because it's a blockade and you getting out and having the run and then the, you have the covenant uh, basically just running for their lives as well. And they decided to like either start shooting at you or uh, try to figure out how to survive. Um, it's just even in legendary difficulty, that's what makes it even worse is because you drop down so much quicker. And there's no sprint yeah. button. There's no nothing. You're just dropping. True. You're just yep. pressing forward. And me being me, I just hold it down even harder because I think that that has some uh, – that can help out somewhat. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Good times. Awesome. Good times. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, man. But uh, I think that's it, Gary, uh, for the yeah. bosses and everything. Uh, nothing comes to mind. Oh man, I really yeah. wish I really wish something popped out, and I don't know why. I guess I could say some King, Kingdom Hearts bosses are always memorable. Uh, going into each world, fighting Kingdom Hearts boss. Uh, I remember uh, Kingdom Hearts one fighting. Oh, I forget the fucking character's name. Uh, the final boss, I, like he's a big gigantic uh, boss guy, big gigantic boss guy. Real descriptive, Adam. Good job. <laughs> he's just gigantic, uh, basically a gigantic heartless. Um, taking him down, but the main one in Kingdom Hearts One was Sethroth, uh, which is like he's like insane, uh, kind of like um, mini boss. I could, I guess you could say in the Colosseum. He's like you don't even have to fight him to beat the game or anything. He just his health bar is so huge. You having to take him out, and he takes you. He like chops you down like in two slices. That's and anybody who was able to beat that boss, kudos to you because that was fucking hard. I actually came up with a, uh, a a final 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 final. Uh, <laughs> what do you call it? Uncharted two. I was thinking about that. Yeah, you know, uh, that was a pretty epic uh, boss mission as well. I, I think that the because you're obviously trying to find uh, in Uncharted two, you're trying to get to Shambhala, which is you know mm-hmm. supposed to be mythical. It's not supposed to be real, um, but you end up getting there. And wait, then you all have these to fight. places Uncharted are not real. If you can believe it, yeah, it's, it's they're not real. 
Yeah, it's heartbreaking. I was heartbroken too when I when I heard about it. But uh, fighting Lazarevich in the in the last part is uh, just so sick. I mean, you're getting chased around. It's kind of ridiculous. I mean, it, <laughs> it's ter- it's totally absurd. I mean, he's drinking tree sap essentially and and getting superhuman abilities and is chasing you a thousand miles an hour with a shotgun. It's pretty <laughs> terrifying. So that that's memorable. I can I can I can throw that in there because that's such a great series and a great game. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that has been our topic episode. Uh, this week, this Tuesday, I know you guys love us so much. But uh, Gary, do you want to say anything before I, you know, take us going, take us gone, take us, um, cut the, you know, you know, cut the cord, you know, end this podcast, hit the red button. What I don't know what to call it. What, what do you have to say? Anything to say? Uh, I think I'm just about <laughs> spent. But um, I just want to thank everybody for listening, like usual. You know, thanks for giving us a listen. Uh, for everybody that's been listening, again, thanks for sticking around and. And listen to us all this time and supporting us. We appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys again on our Friday episode, if not sooner. Actually, no. It'll be our Friday episode. We won't be releasing. Uh, I-, I was going to say, we. I'm probably doing a couple interviews this week uh, with some different people. So you'll be seeing those in later weeks. Not Exciting week. stuff. So I'll be seeing you all on Friday for the news episode. <laughs> Adios. Uh, woo! Yeah, thank you guys so much for uh, being here. If you are a new listener and you stuck through that whole episode, I'm pretty proud of you. Uh, you did a good job. And uh, please, if you want to continue making me proud, hit that subscribe button. If you're a continued listener, we appreciate you all so much. The same amount as a new listener. But it's all equal here. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh, please uh, give us a rating on iTunes. It would help us out so much. Uh, and Or a rating on any podcast service that you use. I'm not sure if you rate on like TuneIn or Google Play, but I know you can on Stitcher, so do that. That would help out a lot. But uh, yeah, remember you can find us on two, uh, on Twitter at 2JerseyKids. You can email us 2JerseyKids at gmail.com. We'd love to answer your questions, uh, discuss things that you have you know, on your brain. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Uh, We love and appreciate you all. We'll see you on Friday. Gary, say bye. See you. Keep playing those games, y'all. Bye.